Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Um, this week uh, we're getting uh, into the Christmas season and so um, I was going to explain why I celebrate Christmas uh, this week and show some Bible verses and um, I've been seeing recently a lot of different YouTube videos and things on social media about a lot of people saying why they don't celebrate Christmas and um, so I figured I'd put out a video saying why I do and yes this is one of the Another one of the issues that I've uh, went back and forth on through the years, um, but a few years ago, you know, I got it settled and figured out uh, biblically, um, uh, you know, my stance on Christmas, and so I do celebrate it, and so we'll talk about that today, and um, so before we get started, I'll go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into the study. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings, and we pray that you're Bless us today and help us to understand your word uh, and learn it in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, and so um, for, let's see, Christmas has always been kind of a back and forth thing um, up until a few years ago. Growing up, um, my mom's birthday is actually on Christmas. Um, and I can, my earliest memories is actually about my parents fighting every Christmas about whether or not to put up a Christmas tree and stuff. Um, my mom was born on Christmas, she's big into Christmas, and my dad, uh, even from my earliest ages, I can remember that, you know, he didn't like Christmas trees, he thought they were pagan because of Jeremiah 10, we're going to look at that scripture today and see what that's actually talking about. Um, so Christmas has always been a turbulent thing most of my life, um, and, uh, then, uh, not long before my dad left, um, he found out about Hanukkah, and so we stopped celebrating Christmas all together and just celebrated Hanukkah, and we did presents and stuff. Um, and uh, it really opened my eyes when that happened because my mother had always fought against him, and then when he said that we could celebrate Hanukkah, she went all for it and was excited about it, but then he got mad because she was all excited about Hanukkah. So with his history throughout my whole life he was abusive controlling uh very manipulative and when i saw that well he got upset because now she wanted to do what he said and celebrate hanukkah so much i had figured out that you know he didn't believe anything he was saying he just wanted to he just hated mom and wanted to make her life miserable um if you look at if you read my brother's testimony um, there is evidence that uh, my dad married my mother. The The marriage was arranged between the families. And he married my mother under false pretenses. He did not love her. He actually hated her and wanted to make her life miserable. He tried to kill her more than once. He tried to kill all of us. Um, he was trying to actually stop Bible prophecy from coming to pass. He's actually an enemy. Um, if you read the testimony, it explains how they in the book of Daniel... Uh, he could be at least a type, if not, like, kind of like a type of one of the beasts, the lion, um, which it is actually prophesied in Daniel that the lion gets saved. So, um, <laughs> apparently someday, hopefully he will, we pray for him to get saved, hopefully someday he will get saved. Um, so that's very really interesting. Um, you can check all that out in the testimony, it's linked down below. Um, it's got all this information in it, that's like another five six hour study <laughs> but so we won't get into that today but it's i'm just giving you my history of you know of christmas and what it's done in my family and how my dad was and um like i said there at the end it became quite apparent that he just fought against christmas because he hated my mother that's very harsh words but i lived with him for 25 years i was raised by you know he's my dad um he left when i was 25 um, I lived in the same house with him for 25 years. I know how he was. And I, I'm telling you, um, somehow he knew who my mother was, knew who her children would be, and wanted to be the father of those children in order to try to destroy prophecy. Um, Isaiah 43 even says that our first father has sinned, and that can't be speaking of Adam because it's, it's clear that it's the physical, our physical father is not Adam, um, because of other things in the verse, and that's all explained in the testimony, but, um, 
Um, you know, I was raised where they were fighting all the time about Christmas trees, and then uh, he didn't want to celebrate Christmas at all. Then we did Hanukkah. Um, but, and he did actually convince, and then, uh, he did actually convince us at that, at the end, he, he actually convinced us that Christmas was totally pagan and we should do Hanukkah and mom went all for it. Then he got mad because she was off for Hanukkah and I'm sitting there going, well, he don't believe nothing of this. Um, but then after he left, we continued. I mean, my mother, we were totally convinced that Christmas was totally evil and we should have nothing to do with it. And we kept with Hanukkah for about, goodness, probably a good uh, four or five years after he left until God showed us different that, you know, hey, you know, it's okay. You can celebrate if you want to and you shouldn't. Basically, he came to us and told us not to be judging others because we had, we were, um, you know, we would, we would be preaching against Christmas and judging others for celebrating it. And he, and you know, it's very, you can, you know, judgment against sin is, is, we're supposed to do that, but you have to be very careful to make sure that what you're judging is a sin. Otherwise, you know, God gets mad at you for that. And so he, he didn't get mad at us. He just corrected us and showed us the truth. He he had mercy on us, which I'm really thankful for. Um, but he showed us the truth about it, and we just said, well, okay, it's not a sin. It's mom's birthday. She really does like Christmas. And mom was like that she wanted to celebrate it again. And my thing was at the time, well, it doesn't really matter to me if I celebrate it or not. It's mom's birthday. She wants to do it. I am not going to fight with her about it. I mean, dad had done so much damage and stuff, and I, you know, and I was going to make... Christmas and her birthday, just the greatest day of the year and everything. Um, and that's what we've done. And But now, you know, after a few more years, um, you know, I truly like Christmas again. And even if my mother went to heaven, I would continue to celebrate. Because at first I was like, well, you know, if, you know, I celebrate it. But, you know, if mom wasn't here, I wouldn't. Um, I've changed my mind on that. I would still celebrate it. There's nothing wrong with it. And to not celebrate it causes so much strife in the body of Christ that, you know, it's not worth it. That's another thing that God showed us. So we'll start looking at Bible verses here. Um, the first verse that God showed us that convicted us on not celebrating Christmas, on, on judging others um, for celebrating Christmas, was Romans sixteen nineteen. It said, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet, I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And I noticed that. And so God was saying, well, yes, you're obedient and, and you try to serve me and you have a pure heart and you're trying to obey me. And, and I'm glad that you do that. But, you know, I want you to be simple concerning evil. And, and this isn't just to us or to me, but he wants all of his children, all Christians and everybody. He doesn't want people to have a whole lot of knowledge of evil. He wants people to be simple-minded concerning evil. Like, we just don't know much about evil. We're, we're not supposed to um, know much about evil. And I was going, well, and, and God said, you know, um, when you tell people why you're not celebrating Christmas, and you're judging them, um, you're defiling their minds because you're going into all the paganism, and you're explaining everything like that. And I was coming, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm defiling the, I'm defiling the minds of Christians. And God don't want that. We're supposed to be simple concerning evil. And I was like, I don't want to be defiling anyone's minds anymore. And so we was like, okay, so, you know, whether we celebrate or not, we don't judge anyone else to, for it uh, because we're having to go into the evil stuff. And then I got to look and I was like, well, um, okay, so we don't want to, like, defile people's minds. And then he, at the same time, he showed us um, Romans 14. Um Romans uh, fourteen five it says one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And then in sixteen, he goes on to say, um, let's see, um, let me find Romans. Oh, no, four, uh, 6, not 16. Romans fourteen six. it says, He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. So, um, if you regard, so God's like, well, you know, when Christians celebrate Christmas, they're not even thinking of the pagan stuff. That doesn't come to their mind. 
still thinking, hey, this is Jesus' birth. This is the day we celebrate Jesus' birth. They are regarding the day to the Lord. Not to some pagan thing that happened thousands of years ago. They're regarding the day to the Lord. And so they they are doing it in a pure heart. And then we're coming in and judging them and defiling their minds. Saying, hey, this is pagan going into all that. And it's defiling their mind. And God said, that's not right. And I was like, okay, um, so uh, it's not wrong to celebrate Christmas because we're not doing it as a pagan thing. We're, we are regarding the day to the Lord, not to some false god. Um, and so I was like, okay. And then, um, and so we was, my family and I was in deep discussions about this. And we're going, okay. Um, yes, Christmas has pagan roots, but it, but what we celebrate as Christmas Day is completely different than what that was. Um, it's, it's not really the same thing. It's completely different. And people who do Christmas, you know, Christians who celebrate Christmas, um, they're doing it as unto the Lord. Um, and we don't need to be defiling their minds because God doesn't want them to know about that evil. And so I was like, well, maybe, okay, so, you know, maybe we should celebrate Christmas so that it doesn't come up as an issue and we're not defiling people's minds and then it's not a sin. And so we was talking about all this and was like, well, it's not a sin because we're regarding the day to the Lord. Um, and so, you know, we talked about it and prayed about it and God was saying, yeah, you can celebrate it. And so we started celebrating again and then... Um, after that, you know, other things came up, you know, well, what about the Christmas tree? Um, Jeremiah chapter 10 is what they use for that. It's the one my dad used for it. And Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5 says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut as a tree out of the forest, the walk of the hands of the walkmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. evil neither also is it in them to do good. Okay, be not afraid of them. That's superstition. That's where you have an object and you think it's a god and you're afraid that it's going to harm you in some way if you disobey it. But it's a tree. Okay, it's an idol. This is talking about putting up a tree and decorating it as an idol. You're worshiping the tree. You're afraid. You're fearing the tree like you would fear God Almighty because you think the tree is God. You know, another verse in the Bible says, you know, the heathen make no sense because... Someone cuts down a tree, and part of it he burns in the fire to keep himself warm. And another part of it, I think he cooks his food with or something. And then the other part of it, he <laughs> makes an idol out of it, bows down to it, and asks it to deliver him. And it's like, wait a minute, you just took the other parts of the tree and burned them. <laughs> Are you going to fight to this thing? Okay, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but that's what that's talking about. It's talking about actual idolatry. Well, you are a, you feel the tree, you feel it like you feel God. Well, okay, I don't feel my, I do not worship or feel my Christmas tree. Okay, <laughs> um, people, Christians don't worship Christmas trees. We don't feel them. We're not like, oh my goodness, we better, you know, do this or that. Or the tree's gonna get mad at us. No. Um. So God was like, okay, there, and then He showed us another verse, some other verses. Um. He showed us, there's quite a, there's a few in Romans 14. Um, Romans 14, 14 says, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Okay, so a decorated tree in and of itself is not unclean. It's not evil, it's not bad. Because the word unclean there... Um, in the Strong's uh, Concordance, which I thought I had, let me see, I think, put it down here. Yeah, it's in the Strong's Concordance, the word unclean in that verse is uh, G2839, and it means unholy and defiled. Okay, 
So there was nothing unholy, defiled, unclean, which could be also mean evil, bad, you know, of itself. So uh, just having a decorated tree is not a bad thing. Okay, that's not bad. It becomes bad if you worship it. If you're afraid that you have to serve it or it's going to do something to you. You treat it like a god. Okay, that's when it's bad. Because the New Testament, yes, in the Old Testament it said, don't bring a cursed thing into your house and you'll be cursed like it. That was Old Testament. Okay, the Old Testament also said that uh, you couldn't eat pork and you couldn't, you know, do all this. There was a lot of stuff in the Old Testament. They were signs and pictures of Christ coming. Um, and they didn't have, God put all these extra laws on them. Because they were not sealed and controlled by the Holy Spirit like we are. Some of them, you know, David prayed, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit could come and go. He did not indwell everyone. It is never said in the Bible that Job was indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, Job went through his trial and stuff, and it doesn't say that the Holy Spirit helped him at all. Um, which actually kind of causes me to doubt absolute total depravity uh, to a point because it's like well there's no it, it, it was in the New Testament it said no one can come to Jesus without the Father drawing him without Jesus drawing him um, but there's nothing like that in the Old Testament so I'm looking into that some because I'm not sure I'm like well you know the thing about the the different there was some kind of a gift of the we don't know that something changed because that's why people say oh no they were dwelt with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament just like they are the New Testament and no because Jesus said that he could not leave until the Holy Spirit came so yeah some people may have had the Holy Spirit upon them or had the Holy Spirit in them but he could he could leave they were not sealed and he did not Jesus said that if he left then the Holy Spirit would condemn the convince the world of sin and stuff. So he didn't like convict and and he didn't keep people from sin back then. Um and so you know it, it God put all these extra laws on them to he put all he put all these extra laws on them to where, you know, don't say the name of false gods and don't um don't bring on any kind of uh you know, they they had to live so separate, you know, like don't bring any cursing into your house or you're cursed with it. And all this stuff, touch not, taste not, handle not, that's in the New Testament. Well, and Paul is like, well, we don't, we're not under that anymore. Um, the New Testament says, there's, we now have the Holy Spirit in us. We're not going to fall into idolatry just by putting up a Christmas tree. In the Old Testament, they might have done that because they didn't have the Holy Spirit to be able to draw that line and say, okay, just decorate it and enjoy the prettiness of it, but don't fall down and worship it. They didn't have the Holy Spirit to keep them. From, from crossing that line. So God was like, well, okay, so in the Old Testament, you couldn't, you probably couldn't put up a Christmas tree or anything because of the, but this is, but now we are in the New Testament and the Bible says that there is nothing unclean of itself. Okay, in the Old Testament, there was a whole, they were taught there was a whole lot of things unclean. I mean, you couldn't touch the body of a dead dog. You couldn't, um, you know, you couldn't eat pork or rabbit. Um, you can eat uh, unclean things. There was a lot of unclean things. And they would actually have the wrath of God come down on them for it because it was all like a picture of Christ coming um, and and saving us. Um, so in the New Testament, the law has been fulfilled. We don't obey the letter of the law anymore. It's not that we can't... We don't obey the letter of the law. We obey the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law was don't worship false gods. The letter of the law, the 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 letter of the law was okay. You can't say their names. You can't have nothing to do with them. You can't. I mean, you you know, if it's a if it's a heathen celebration, you can't then take it and make it apply to God. Um, you couldn't do any of that in the Old Testament because they didn't have the same protections of the Holy Spirit that we have today. It was different. Um, today we are in New Testament. It says. There is nothing unclean of itself. But, uh, let's see, what's that at? Five. Um, what was it? Let me see. Uh, Romans 14, 14. Okay. 
And it says, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus. So this is coming, you know, because Jesus has died, because he has given us the Holy Spirit. So persuaded by the Lord Jesus. So Jesus has said now that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So if, they, if you think it's unclean and you think you need to stay away from it, then do so. But it's not unclean of itself. It's all perception of it, whether it's clean or unclean. But it's not unclean of itself. Um, and uh, but so he showed us that that having a decorated tree is not evil. It's not a sin. There's nothing wrong with it, unless you worship it. Well, I don't worship the Christmas tree. Okay, I just put it up. And it's pretty. Um, and the Christmas tree can be applied to Christ and to salvation because Jesus died on a tree, right? Okay, so the Christmas tree could be picture of the cross. The Christmas tree is also an evergreen tree. It you know it always stays green even in the winter. So that's ever it could be a picture of everlasting life because green is the color for life. And um, so you can get, put. Biblical applications to a Christmas tree. Um, that's possible. And there's nothing in the Bible that says in the New Testament that we cannot do that. Those things in the Old Testament, but that was for that time. If you're going to follow those laws in the Old Testament, you would, you know, you might also, I mean, you don't have to, but, you know, you might also want to follow the dietary laws and stuff too. If you're going to follow Old Testament law that doesn't apply anymore, then possibly, probably just go ahead and follow the whole thing. Um, and um, so God started showing us this stuff. You know, there's nothing I'm clean of itself. Yes, you can have a Christmas tree. Yes, you can celebrate Christmas. And, you know, my dad was always like, well, um, you can't take something pagan and make it Christian. And I was thinking about that. I said, well, God, what about that? You know, can you really take something pagan and make it Christian? And God said, what do you think I did with every person who gets saved? <laughs> did I not turn? Isn't that what salvation does? Doesn't salvation turn pagan, heathenistic, evil people into Christians? I was like, oh, yeah, good point. Okay, so if we can turn pagan people into Christian people, then we can turn other things like celebrations and holidays. We can, we can turn them Christian and forget and erase the paganism that there's nothing wrong with that um you know as long as we do it in a pure way um to where we're you know getting rid of the we forget the paganism and we yeah we can do that um there's nothing evil of itself if you hold the day to the Lord that's fine um and you know, we turn pagan people Christian all the time. That's that's our job. We're supposed to. It's called converting, um, and we have to remember. Uh, you know, everyone's like, "Well, if you go back far enough, everything came from paganism." I heard somebody say that the other day, and I thought, you know, actually, if you go back far enough, everything points back to God. Everything points back to holiness and God. They give the devil too much credit. The devil has never invented anything. He is a copycat. Okay, the devil doesn't invent anything. Um, you know, God came out with this stuff. God, those, those things in nature, you know, God came out with things and the devil took, stole it and made it pagan. Did you know that even the, 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 the devil even tried to make a counterfeit gospel in Egypt? He, Egypt had like gods and one of them, it was said that had died on a cross and rose again. That's actually in Egyptian heathenism. The the devil knew the prophecies of Christ, so he corrupted it and made it pe uh, heathenistic and pagan thousands of years before Christ even came. So that today, you know, the crazy people would be like, well, the the gospel, it, it's not true because it actually came from Egypt and, and they just changed it. Well, no, the devil knew the prophecies. He corrupted it and so that then people would try to use that um, excuse. Um, the devil takes everything that God does and corrupts it. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things. I mean, everything can be, you know, because they were saying, well, like, 
make makeup and stuff can be traced back to um, paganism. Well, yes, it's true that man learned those things from fallen angels in Genesis, but and and those things were to be reserved for angels and not given to man, at least not yet. Maybe it would have come in the future. Um, some people think that. I'm not sure. But the devil gave it to man and corrupted it. But God is the one who created it for the angels. So everything actually goes back to God, not to paganism. The devil stole it and corrupted it. And as Christians, we're supposed to take everything away from the devil and 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 claim it back. So, you know, um, you know, makeup and jewelry and stuff isn't wrong as long as you don't overdo it and, you know, and it's a whole issue, uh, between you and God and, and what, and why you're doing things. Um, you know, if, if someone's living a loose lifestyle and wants to attract all kinds of men and, and they're doing it for those reasons, then I'm okay, that would be a sin. But um, someone who just wants to wear jewelry and or makeup. I mean, I don't wear makeup because I really don't have to. I've got uh, Cherokee in me and my eyebrows and eyelashes are dark. And I don't really, I've got good skin complexion and stuff. I don't really need to wear makeup, so I don't wear makeup. I did get my ears pierced. Um, and that's because uh, the Bible in Ezekiel 16 um prophesied that God would put earrings in my ears. Um, because I, you know, my brother and I are the two witnesses, and he's talking about us, and he says, I, I put earrings in thine ears. Um, and so it was actually prophesied that God would put earrings in my ears. And I was like, okay, so that's not wrong. And then he showed me the, these verses again. Well, no, there's nothing evil of itself. And, you know, and my brother was like, well, that's why the Bible says that God would put earrings in your ears because mom and dad sure wasn't going to. And I wasn't going to. I was totally against it up until about a, about a year ago. And I was like, well, the Bible says that God puts earrings in my ears. That means it's his will. And the Bible never speaks against earrings. Um, I guess I'll go get my ears pierced. You know, I truly did that because it was I, it was prophesied that I would. And it was, and I was like, well, that's God's will. Um, you know, he said, I put earrings in your ears. I was like, Okay, then I will get my ears pierced. I wasn't, you know, I was always like, I got enough holes in my head. I don't want the pain of it. But I was like, okay, well, God said it. I'm going to go do it. And actually, it didn't hurt that bad. I was surprised. Um, and, you know, so, um, but when it comes to things like this about, you know, Christmas and these kind of things, you know, they go, they don't go back to paganism. You got to go back further than that. Okay, if you go all the way back to the beginning, this all came from God. Um, you know, the, and that's why there was nothing evil of itself. Because somewhere back there, it all started with God. I mean, God probably came up with decorated trees somehow. I'm not sure. It's not in the Bible. I'm not sure how he did it. But the devil never comes up with his own ideas. So, he copied God somehow. I don't know how, but... The, the devil is a copycat, not an inventor. So, he, the, you know, if there's nothing evil of itself, then, you know, it's not, the devil didn't originate anything. God originated it all, and the devil stole it, and so we can reclaim it in the name of Jesus and take out the paganism and make it Christian. I mean, we can do that. Um, you know, we don't bow down to idols, we don't worship idols, we worship God, but having a decorated tree, celebrating Christmas, this stuff is not pagan, it's not bad the, the way that Christians celebrate it. Um, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, of course, I know Jesus was not born on Christmas, you know, we know that. Um, the shepherds are not out in the fields in the middle of December. It's too cold, they would have, all those little lambs would have froze to death. Um, Jesus was more than likely born at Tabernacles. Um, if you take and, uh, you know, John the Baptist's birth and everything and you figure all that up, it comes out to September. It comes out to the Feast of Tabernacles. And my brother did a study, was researching one day, and he found, well, that the first day of Tabernacles, on the year that Jesus was born, was actually September 11th, which is very interesting. 
So that was, a, you know, um, that that's that was very, that was like, whoa, okay. And then, so if Jesus was born on the first day of Tabernacles, then the eighth day, the day after the seven-day celebration, is actually called the last great day. And many people believe that the final judgment will happen on that day. Um, and so, and that was actually the day that Jesus was circumcised on. So that's all very interesting. And I just, we just realized a few days ago that this war that's happening in Israel right now actually started on that day this year. It started on the eighth day, you know, the day after the seven day celebration of, um, tabernacles. So that could be a, another sign of the end times, you know, uh, a sign of God trying to draw Israel to himself and trying to get them uh, to turn to him. Um, you know, the war over there was really bad and and they need to, you know, Hamas needs to be um, held accountable and done, done away with uh, as, a, uh, as a terrorist organization and the war should not be supporting Hamas. Um, but it was very interesting that that war actually happened on the the last great day celebration, you know, the day after that eighth day, the day after Tabernacles, and a lot of people believe that that is a day of judgment. That will be the day of the final judgment in the future. So I was like, whoa, that's interesting. So, you know, that could be another sign of the end times there. Um, and, uh, but Jesus was circumcised on, would have been circumcised on that day um, if he was born on the first day of Tabernacles. Um, so, you know, yeah, Christmas is not the day that Jesus was actually born on. Um, but it's a day that the church has set aside to celebrate it. And yes, I know a lot of people are like, well, it came from the Catholic Church and all this. Well, just because, I mean, I know the Catholic Church is a false church. They have never been the true church. And they're pagan and everything. And they've never been right. But we don't even celebrate Christmas today as the Catholic Church did because we don't have a mass. Okay, okay. It was the the way that the Catholic Church set up. They set up a mass on that day. Well, that's why it's called Christmas. We still call it Christmas, but it's but you know we don't eat the mass. We don't have anything to do with the mass. Um, we just celebrate Jesus' birth on that day. And yes, they you know they started and everything. But you have to realize, even if even though the Bible does have Sunday worship in it in the New Testament. It was it it truly was the Catholic Church that um, popularized Sunday and actually made it law, um, but yet we still worship on Sunday. You know, just because the Catholic Church does something doesn't mean that we have to, you know, run from it like the plague. We have to be able to discern and and know. Okay, well, yeah, they did it, but we can we can come over here and we can celebrate on that day and just not do the evil stuff that they did. You know, um, because there's nothing evil of itself, and you can regard a day to the Lord or not. Um, so it's not, it's not a sin. Um, I can understand that some people, you know, I can understand and respect the people who don't celebrate Christmas because of the pagan and the Catholic stuff and all that. I understand that. I respect that. But, and if they want to do that, that's fine. But nobody should be judging anyone concerning celebrating or not celebrating Christmas. It's when you start judging others, that's when you're, it's, it becomes a sin. Um, and that's what we were doing. And that's why God, in his mercy, corrected us and didn't whack us over the head real good. He could have. But he was very nice and he just showed us scriptures and, and taught us. Um, and then you do have... Uh, some things here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 23-33 says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, Whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake, 
for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if by if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. That was one thing God showed us too. It was hindering by us judging other people for celebrating Christmas. It was hindering the gospel. And we were putting, we had started putting more emphasis on that than on the gospel. We were preaching anti-Christmas instead of salvation. Um, that had become our focal point during the Christmas season instead of the gospel. So we have, you have got to be careful about things like that. You know, if you want to have, you know, extra biblical strict standards, okay, those are your convictions. That's fine. You're allowed to do that. The Bible says that. But we are not to judge each other and other people on that. That is not to take the place of the gospel. We have to keep things in their proper perspective, and we must respect each other's convictions. No, I'm not. You know, I have friends who don't celebrate Christmas. And I don't go invite them over to my dinner, my house for Christmas dinner. Okay? I don't even talk to them about it because they used to get mad at me and they think I'm a heathen, but okay. <laughs> because they're still in the judgmental part. Um, but I don't I don't send them messages, hey, come over to my house and I don't give them a Christmas present either. I'm not going, you know, you don't do things like that. You don't, you don't push your beliefs on someone else when they're not absolutely biblical and whatever i mean you know um you know we don't we don't uh harm other christians that way um and you know so we need to do everything to the glory of god and you know a christmas dinner is not pagan or sin unless you go to someone's house and like well we are like old time uh European pagans and we offered this Christmas dinner to a false god and you're like oh wait a minute um, well I can't eat this because I'm a Christian because I can't like partake in the worship of a false god like that so I'm, I'm not going to be able to eat the food and and that's not for your conscience sake that is for their conscience that's so that they will get saved that, that's that's an open door for you to like explain the gospel to them and, and then you don't have to leave like get up and leave and and not eat anything. You can ask them, well, do you have anything to eat that um, has not been sacrificed to an idol? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and then, you know, you can request that. But in our day and age and our culture here in America, the chances of somebody, you going to somebody's house for Christmas dinner and them saying that they actually sacrificed it to some old Norse god or something is like uh, probably slim to none. Um it, it, it probably could happen. My brother has actually worked with a few heathens. Like actual idol worshipping heathens. Um, so it could happen. But it probably won't. Um, so because there's, there's not really many of them around. But I guess there is a small group um, here around where we live. Because my brother's come home before going. This guy actually is an idolater. He actually bows down to idols. and Like the, like the Greek gods and stuff. And I'm going, he does what? Really? Okay, um, and, uh, yeah, so, that, it could happen, but probably not, um, and then, in, um, let's see, okay, and so, you know, on this debate about Christmas and all these things that, are not actual, you can find what they're not actually a sin to do. Um, that's where it comes in to, you know, you can have your convictions, I have my convictions, and, and what's sin for one person is not sin for another in these type of situations because it says um, in Romans 14, 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Okay, so if someone is convinced that Christmas is pagan and then they partake in Christmas because they're being pressured, it's, it, 
it is a sin for them to celebrate Christmas until they change the until the conviction is actually truly changed. Um, it's not the same for me to celebrate Christmas because my conviction has been truly changed. I found the word of God and, and God has showed me these things. I'm like, well, okay, it's not a sin, so we'll celebrate it. Um, and especially since it was mom's birthday, I, if it wasn't my mother's birthday, I probably would still not celebrate it. Um, from that point, you know, I went to change. Um, now, even if she wasn't here, I'd probably still celebrate it because I like it and it's, it's grown on me. Um, and, you know, it's not a sin, and it, we worship Jesus, and it just kind of does seem to gender strifes if people find out you don't celebrate Christmas. So it, like, causes strifes and problems. Um, so, and it, the Bible also says here, uh, Romans 14, 1 says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be upholden, or he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. So it says right there that when it, and it goes on down talking about days and stuff, and if you take the whole Bible in context, you know, with the other verses I've said, you know, it's whatsoever you do, do to the glory of God. Okay, on these things where the Bible doesn't absolutely say this is a sin. This is, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like murder or adultery or theft. Okay, those are sins. Okay, you can't do those things. Um, these are not sins. Whether or not you celebrate Christmas, whether or not you will jewelry, whether or not you will makeup, these things are not sins. Okay. When you look at this, where it is not a sin, then you, God says that if you do it, you will stand, you will, God, you know, God will hold you up and you're not going to fall because of it. God will hold you up, you will stand, um, because God's able to make you stand. Okay, it says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master, he standeth or falleth. Like, don't judge each other on these things. We stand or fall on our own to, on, of ourselves to God on these things. And it says, yea, he shall be, uh, be hold, holding up. Yea, he shall be holding up. Saying that if someone does these things in a pure mind, pure heart, then God will hold them up and make them stand. And, and it even says um, that God accepts him. Uh... In verse 6, it says, He that regardeth the day, regardeth that unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God things. And he that eateth not to the Lord, eateth not, and giveth God things. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Okay? But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. 
and is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Okay, so there was a lot there. Um, but the whole point is, and, and you know, it talks about eating a lot, but in the same passage it also speaks of the day. So, you know, it, it goes for, it, and it starts out talking about doubtful disputations. There's a lot of doubtful disputations, okay. If it's a doubtful disputation, if it is not an absolute sin, if it's doubtful, going, well, yeah, but I do it to God. So, and it says you can, so if it's a doubtful disputation, we don't judge each other on that. We, that, you know, and we don't, there's no reason to cause strife and fight over that, those things. Um, he just gives the two examples of eating and days, but, you know, jewelry, um, makeup, there's all kinds of things. That fall into doubtful disputations. Um, you know, many times in the Old Testament, when it comes to jewelry, it's mentioned. It's it's just mentioned, and it's not condemned by God. It's actually mentioned as a good thing. Like I said, Isaiah Ezekiel sixteen says that God puts earrings in Israel in in the ears of the of Israel, the two witnesses. Um, and it's a picture of Israel, and it's uh. My brother and I, uh, specifically, um, but, um, and I figured he wasn't talking about my brother since he's a man, and it, I mean, yes, in the ancient cultures, men wore earrings, but in all culture, men don't wear earrings, so I was, you know, um, the prophecy is to both of us, but he didn't get his, <laughs> he, was, he, was, <laughs> he wasn't about to do that. He was like, um, well, modern day, in all culture, you know, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, um, but I got, I got mine pierced. Um, I put, I wear earrings, and but I just got like I didn't get like my like, whole ear, and I didn't do my nose. And yes, the Bible does mention the nose jewel. You know, I've seen a few things in the Bible. It mentions a belly button jewel in another place, and it's actually, uh, it's not condemned. And I'm sitting there going, okay, that's like totally against what I was taught. And I'm going. You know, my brother and I did a Bible study looking at modest, actual modest dress in the Bible, and what we found is a lot more lax than what we were raised with. And so, you know, God's been dealing with us on this judging stuff, because man, we used to get after people and and judge them, and you know, and God's going, um, where in my world does it actually say that? Is that in there? And we start looking and we're actually finding some things that blow us away going, um, no, that's actually the other way. Uh, okay. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of things that can fall into this doubtful disputations. If, if it's not absolute, like, sin in the Bible, then you just, you, you just don't, you don't, like, make a big deal about it. I mean, you can have personal, you know, my personal preferences are, um, you know, I still dress very, very modestly. You're not going to see me wearing a half shirt with a, I did not get my belly button pierced. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> You're not going to see me walk around with like a half shirt. No. Um, is that, from what I found in the Bible, is that biblical? Well, yeah. It's in there. It's not condemned. I mean, apparently what they thought was modest and what we thought, because modest is like two different things, because I'm sitting there going, okay, I wouldn't be caught dead like that, but, um, I guess I really can't go around judging other people more now, um, because I found scripture that okayed it, and I was like, oh boy, um, but you won't see me with that. <laughs> just because it's okay, to, just because God says I can't doesn't mean that I always will, um, we, we are allowed, the Bible says that we are allowed to have our own personal convictions and stuff, um, you know, so, yeah. But there's a lot of things that fall under doubtful, doubtful uh, disputations, you know, with Christmas and stuff. Um, and so those things we're not supposed to fight over. We're supposed to make for things, follow after things that make for peace. Um, because these things, you know, these outward things like, you know, jewelry and, and Christmas and Easter and all these things, 
that that has nothing to do with um you know people can celebrate Christmas and be righteous people. Okay, it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, and that would also include days and stuff and other doubtful disputations. That's not what the kingdom of God is about. The kingdom of God is about righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. A person can be righteous in the eyes of God and have peace and have joy in the Holy Ghost and celebrate Christmas and wear jewelry and have, uh, at least women can have earrings. There's a cultural thing about earrings in America. Um, and, you know, so... And especially in the churches, you know, it said, you know, submit to the pastors and people. So if your pastor, you know, is against, um, that's one thing about when you join a church, I mean, church membership is very important, you know, um, you have a great responsibility to submit to your pastor and church leadership. Um, if they don't want you, uh, you know, if they've got standards of dress and stuff in the church and, and, you know, they think that women shouldn't wear makeup and jewelry, then if you're going to go to that kind of a church, then you um, probably should submit to that so you don't cause conflict. Um, you know, churches have the right to, you know, set those standards and stuff. Um, so, you know, you have to weigh all of this, but they all doubt for disputation, so it's not something that you're supposed to, like, really judge someone over or anything. Um, a lot of churches do judge people. That's why I say, you know, if you go to a church that's got standards like that, then it's probably best that you just go ahead and submit to them if you want to stay there. If you don't want to submit to those standards, don't go to the church. Go find a church that agrees with your standards. Um, but, and I'm not saying that, like, everything is okay and and trying to be woke or anything. I'm looking at the Bible and saying, okay, there is things that... I was raised with that I was raised to make a big deal about that uh, the Bible says isn't even a sin, um, you know, and and then the whole thing, um, you know, there's just a lot of things that I was raised with that was doubtful disputations, things like that, and the Bible says that we're supposed to follow after things for peace. So if you not celebrating Christmas and telling other people and and about it and talking about it, if that is causing strife and conflict, then you know, just don't talk about it. Don't, don't be judging people about it. Don't cause, like, you know, follow after things that make for peace. You don't have to celebrate Christmas, but just don't say anything about it, you know. Um, and then, uh, because when we didn't celebrate Christmas, we wouldn't, we refused to eat Christmas dinners at the church we went to. Now, this here says that you eat whatever was set before you unless they actually say that it was sacrificed to an idol. But we thought that since they were celebrating Christmas, they didn't actually sacrifice to one. No, no. That, that's that's a figurative of sacrificing to an idol. It could be, in some ways, if they were actually, if that was actually true, well, okay, Christmas is pagan. And if what we thought was true, well, it was actually pagan, we could have nothing to do with it because it was a cursed thing. And I, we didn't have Romans 14 saying, hey, God has cleansed everything. There's nothing unclean of itself. If you want to hold a day to the Lord, you can. It doesn't matter what the day was in history or anything. That, you know, it says if you want to regard a day to the Lord, you can regard a day to the Lord. Um, it doesn't have, well, uh, you can regard a day to the Lord, but you can't uh, call it the same thing. Or you can't, it didn't put any other extra rules like that. It said if you want to regard it to the Lord, you can regard it to the Lord. So, um... You know, and so, you know, we, there was, we caused a lot of strife over this because we thought we were right. Um, and that's what God was telling us, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't be doing that. Second Timothy 2.23 says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. So this goes back to, you know, if it is a doubtful disputation, then it is a foolish and an unlearned question. You know, should we celebrate Christmas? Should we? Well, jury, should we do this? Should we do that? All this extra stuff that the Bible does not say is a sin. Okay. These are foolish and unknown questions, and they gender strifes, and so we don't bring them up. Um, you know, you don't fight about these things. They, you know, we avoid these things, so we don't, you know... If you don't want to celebrate Christmas, then you just, you know, you could just tell people, well, I just don't want to celebrate it and, um, 
and just leave it at that. And if you do celebrate Christmas and you know people who don't, you know, don't buy them a Christmas present. Don't invite them over for Christmas dinner. Um, because the Bible says that your brother should not be offended uh, by your meat. And, of course, if you take that in context, and it's also talking about it would include days and anything else. And, and you know, don't put a stumbling block in front of your brother to make him weak or to fall. Because if they honestly believe that something is a sin and then they do it just to please you, then they have sinned. Because to them, it is a sin because they esteem it to be a sin. It says, there is nothing unclean of itself, but to anyone that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So, in these instances, you do have, well, it's not a sin for me, but maybe it is a sin for you because of what you believe about it. Um, so, you know, we have to respect each other's beliefs, and we do not judge people over these extra-biblical standards. Um, and, uh, so this is why, you know, this is why I now celebrate Christmas, um, and I don't fight about it with people, um, and Matthew 23, you know, uh, I was hearing somebody on YouTube last week, and they were going all about this, you know, should Christians celebrate Christmas and stuff, and I watched it because I was interested to see what their reasoning was. Um, I'm always interested in learning and and things, so I'll see something, and I'll be like, oh, okay, that's interesting, let's see what they say, and they were like, oh, well, um, you know, and, and of course, they were talking about the paganism and stuff, and then they were talking about the commercialization, and, you know, even a lot of Christians get caught up, and they, and, and they put, like, Jesus over in the corner, and then it's all about all this other stuff, about the gifts and, and stuff, um, and, and that is a problem, you know, uh, the, you know, a lot of Christians have that problem, they, they, forget it they kind of forget about jesus and and put him on a back burner um we've never done that in our family the you know christmas was always about jesus um yes we got presents and we ate food and ate candy but jesus was always the center of it so you know we didn't just keep christ in christmas we kept christ as the center of christmas and i'm thinking i might do a uh, message on that uh this year sometime you know um and um, because that, that's a really good point. Don't just keep Christ in Christmas. Make sure you make him the center of your Christmas. Okay. So he's supposed to be the main focus. Yes, we get gifts and we eat candy and we eat meals. But Jesus is the focus. And, um, but they were talking about Christmas. And they were, but they they were not nearly, because when we believed that it was absolutely pagan and evil, we did not eat Christmas dinners. We did not watch Christmas movies. We did not, I mean, we avoided it like the plague. We didn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, pole. And they were sitting there talking, well, we don't celebrate Christmas. And it's, you know, they were talking about the paganism and the, and the different things. And then, but then they said, but we watch Christmas movies. And if you celebrate Christmas, you know, that that's okay. You can celebrate it if you want to. But just call it what it is. You know, it is a pagan. If you want to celebrate a pagan, then, then they go off into this thing. If you want to celebrate like a culture or a pagan holiday, you know, that's fine. But don't try to make it Christian. And I'm sitting there going, what in the world are they talking about? For one minute they're saying it's evil. And the next minute they're saying it's not. And then they was like, well, you know, they watched The Grinch and, and some Christmas movies. And, and uh, I'm sitting there going... You know, they were the first people I've ever met who did not celebrate Christmas for religious reasons and would watch Christmas movies. Because my friends who don't celebrate Christmas, they don't watch Christmas movies. <laughs> they don't eat Christmas dinners. They, they, they don't touch it. Um, and I'm going, well, that seems hypocritical because they they're really judge. she was like really judging people, being very judgmental and sarcastic. Towards people who did, towards Christians who did celebrate Christmas, even if they tried to keep Jesus in it and everything. And, and God was like, and I was like, you know, that just doesn't seem right. And God showed me Matthew one twenty, and Matthew twenty three one through four, where it says, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say. And do not, for they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. 
And then also the other verse in Romans that says, Who art thou, a man that judges another when you do the same things? And God was saying, yeah, they're, they're being hypocritical. It's not right because they're coming down really harshly on people for celebrating Christmas. But then they watch The Grinch. And, um, and, and they watch the old cartoon, not the... I don't even watch the new one. I mean, it was... And, and the other new one they came out with was... Yeah, the, the newer ones are... I have more, like, like moral issues with those, those ones. Um, I have moral issues with those. Um, so I don't, I don't watch those. But I watch the, you know, the cartoon from, like, the 60s. I love it. Uh, but when we didn't celebrate Christmas, we didn't watch that because we thought that was evil. Um, but now that God has shown us the truth and, okay, Christmas is not evil. You don't have to celebrate if you don't want to, but don't be judging others because it's not evil. I'm like... Okay, well, if it's not evil and it's mom's birthday and she wants to celebrate it, basically left it up to mom. And she said, yeah, she wanted to celebrate it again, so we did. And that's what we do. Um, you know, um, but uh, I'm not, you know, they were sitting there just really being judgmental to, for, towards people for celebrating Christmas. And then they said that they themselves watched The Grinch. <laughs> and I'm going... That sounds a little hypo. That that's like really hypocritical. And then God was like, uh, "Yeah, they're being pharisaical and hypocritical." And and He was like, "They're not right at all." And I'm going, "Yeah." And and then they mentioned that they watched Star Wars. They were saying that in everything that you do, you're supposed to make sure that it's pleasing to God, and you you're glorifying Christ in it. And I'm going, "Okay, then you know." Now I don't I don't think it's a sin to watch Star Wars, but I personally don't like the show. <laughs> My brother does. <laughs> I don't. I am not. I, I don't really like Star Wars. Um, but I'm sitting there going, you know, well, how do you glorify God in watching Star Wars when? It, I mean, how does that? How how are you glorifying God in that? You know, especially when you don't celebrate Christmas because it's. It's got pagan histories, and you can actually celebrate Christmas without bringing in the paganism at all. But then you're going to watch Star Wars, which is actually talking, of, which is actually all centered around and talking about a false religion, a religion of forces, which is the Beast's religion. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Now, I personally, my all personal convictions about watching TV and what we watch is, you know. If we can watch it without falling into sin, um, then that that's that's pretty much my stand. There's a lot of things that I don't watch still because, I mean, I just don't want to. Um, but if we want to watch something and like you know Star Wars or something, and it's like okay, well, I'm not going to fall into sin. I'm not going to start worshiping a god of forces. It's not going to cause me to fall. Um, so we can watch that, and then you know, we'll if. Uh, now, if somebody was to come over to the house and we knew that they had come out of paganism or something, then we would not watch that when they were here because it could be a stumbling block to them. And it could lead them back into um, some uh, bad things that they came out of. Um, so that's where that line is. Um, you know, like I said, there's still a lot of stuff we don't watch because we don't feel comfortable watching it and, you know... Um, but uh, when it comes right down to it, you know, it's like, well, okay, is it going to cause me to fall into sin? Can we? And a lot of times, like with a lot of the historical movies, uh, because we're, we're all history buffs, so I hope parents raise us to be that way. With a lot of the historical movies, we will fast forward or turn our heads. I mean, we have and guys say, you can do that. You know, they're historical. They're based on truth. If you don't learn history, you're doomed to repeat it. Um... And he was like, well, you know, you can turn your head, you can fast forward through it. And we do that a lot, um, especially with the historical ones. Um, if it's not a historical movie, you know, it's got stuff in it, we usually just turn it off because it's like, okay, we don't even have to watch, you know, you know, we don't, there's no reason to watch it or anything, you know, we'll find something else to watch. Um, so, you know, we, we don't just let it, be, it is, we don't just, you know, let everything go, you know, whatever goes, goes, um, no, we, but the very bottom standard is, 
okay, if it's not going to make us fall into sin, then it's it's okay because it's not going to offend. It's not going to make us fall into sin because, um, you know, that's that's the essence there of what God was saying. Don't do anything that would cause your brother to fall. Well, you wouldn't want to do anything that would cause you to fall. Um, so if it's not going to cause you to fall, then, and if you have faith, have it before you and God, you know, um, that's all very bottom standard. But like I said, there's still a lot of things we don't watch. We'll turn our heads, fast forward to through things because we don't feel comfortable watching them. Um, we probably shouldn't watch, you know, people, it shouldn't be allowed by law to be there. Um, but it is, we live in the world and not of the world. And we can't just, you know, these Christians who are really, really strict and they can't ever do anything and they have terrible, boring lives. God doesn't want us to live that way. Um, you know, you, uh, figure out how to over, you know, get around the bad stuff and still have the good stuff. Um, you know, and, but, you know, these people are just being really judgmental about Christmas stuff. And then I'm going, but, okay, but you watch Star Wars. Well, it's, it's in your face, Pagan. You know, and it's like, um, <laughs> Really? Um, because when we believed that Christmas was wrong, we also didn't, we didn't watch anything with magic in it. I mean, we stopped watching Lady and the Tramp because it started out at Christmas. That's how strict we were. If we believe that God is going to get angry with us about something, we don't touch it with a temple of hope. We, we try our best not to be hypocrites. I mean, we try our best to live according to the Bible, the way God wants us to. But as we study the Bible more and more, we're finding that the standards that we were raised with, or like way up here, and God's standards are more here. So as long as we don't come down here, we're okay. And then, you know, I was like, well, you don't want to get real close. You know, you shouldn't live on the line because then you can cross over. Well, the Bible says that we rise and we stand and fall to our own master, not to judge each other, because we stand and fall to our own master, and God will hold us up and not let us fall. Okay, so it's a personal decision. How close to that line do you want to live? Now, I still live pretty far from it most of the in most things and most times, especially in the way I dress and stuff, because I don't feel comfortable wearing things that you know that that sh goes against the standards that I was raised with. I was raised with extremely high standards, and I'm not comfortable wearing things that go against those standards. But I can no longer judge anyone else for it or even think about it or anything. Okay, well, it's biblical. So, you know, if they want to wear that, they can wear that. Um, I'm not going to be caught dead in it because I don't feel comfortable with it. And I don't have to, like, change to where I would allow that. Because like, you see that a lot with the world. You know, I watch these reality TV shows of these homeschoolers. And they graduate and they get out in the world. And then their friends, you know, they were raised really strict like I was. And their friends start pressuring them into becoming just like, you know, to do things that they don't really want to do. Now, I will not allow people to do that to me. I understand the standards I was raised with was extra biblical. They're extremely high. And I am not going to judge other people for doing those. But nobody is going to judge me for not doing them. Nobody is going to judge me for keeping my high personal standards of myself. I am not going to make myself feel uncomfortable to please others. You know, I'm not going to do that. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to change like that because I don't have to change for people. If God is okay with the way I dress, then that's, and that's the standard. Is God okay with the way you dress, what you watch, what you celebrate? If God's okay with it, that is a personal thing between you and God. And if God is okay with it and it doesn't violate actual biblical standards... And you can have a pure heart before God and do those things. Um, it's not up to anyone to judge you. But if there's not chapter and verse that says this is a sin. If you cannot find that. then And you actually find opposites. Like, you know, the Bible actually mentions in one place about a belly button jewel. And it does not condemn it. It just mentions it. And it's concerning Israel. And I'm going... So that's not a sin.
Because if you're going to have a belly button jewel, you would have to have a half shirt on so people would see it. So, you know, the thing about the way I was raised, where, where women have to dress completely modestly and be all covered up like I am. <laughs> or uh, men would lust after them and then they're responsible because the man just can't control himself and you have to protect men from sinful thoughts. That's not in the Bible either, and that has allowed a lot of abuses into different churches and different groups, and it's it's all over the place. It's not just the Mormons or just the, I mean, or just the IBOP. Uh, it's in, it's it's in everywhere. It's in, we don't. One of the main reasons why my family and I do not go to a church, we have our own private services at home, because every time we go to church, we have men chasing us. And I am not in church for that. Every time we walk into a church, my mother has been chasing her and I have been chasing me. And it's and it's like and, and we dress we don't dress in modestly at all. We wear long skirts, we wear uh shirts, you know, we do not wear sleeveless you know, there's nothing wrong. I'm not telling anybody, there's nothing wrong with wearing a sleeveless shirt or showing your shoulders. Um there's nothing wrong with those things, but we don't dress that way because we don't feel comfortable dressing that way. We were, we've were we done, we've dressed like this our whole lives. Um, I, you know, I usually uh, don't wear anything that goes too much lower than my collarbone heel. Um, it's, it's getting so, I've been trying to change on that and I don't know, I might be able to because it's getting so hard to find tops. Um, but I, I'm just like, okay, I know biblically it's not, you know, it's just basically pretty much maybe don't show cleavage or something. Don't let it go like all the way down, <laughs> you know, and a lot of, but a lot of shirts anymore will come down to about right here where my jewel is or maybe down to here. So it's not actually showing anything. Um, but it's just too little for me, and I have been working on possibly changing that because it is so hard to find clothes. And now, you know, if you wear a button-up shirt and you button the top button, some people think you're homosexual. Um, which we shouldn't be warned by what the world thinks about us, but I really don't want to be touching, I don't want to be looking anything like that. Um... So, you know, I'm, I really struggle with tops because it's becoming a real problem. Um, you know, I really do st struggle with tops. I just bought a bunch of these, and I was hoping they were more summery because they were um, short sleeve, but they were good for the winter. Um, the, it would be a pretty good summertime shirt if it didn't have this huge thick, if the turtleneck wasn't so thick. Um... So, you know, I'm really struggling when it comes to tops right now because it is so hard to find anything. And then it's like if you want, like, it's it's like the more decent clothes cost a lot more. So these were on sale for only $13 a piece. And so I bought them. But, I mean, they will work for the winter. I was hoping to, that they would work for winter and summer, but I don't think they're going to because that is so thick. It's going to be really hot in the summer. So, you know, I really struggle with tops. And, you know, God has told me that, you know, there's nothing wrong. And, and the Bible shows, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with it coming down to about heel. Um, and, you know, maybe I can change that just out of necessity because I can't find clothes. It's, it's ridiculous. I can't. You know, I should have been born in the 1700s. I think I would have been a lot better if you had to, like, wear everything from the neck and cover your arms and all the way down to your ankles. I'm more of that kind of person. Um, it's just, But it's just my personal standards, so anybody else wants to wear other things. I mean, that's between... It's basically between them and God. There are all a few biblical standards, but they're not nearly as strict as what I was raised with. And the same thing with Christmas, you know. it's You know, I celebrate Christmas because... God said I could, and it's my mom's birthday, and if I don't celebrate Christmas, it causes so much fighting and strife in the church and in the body of Christ, with other Christians and people, it's not worth it. The Bible says to avoid foolish and unlearned questions which gender strife. So, 
because of those things. That's why I celebrate Christmas. It's, you know, you know, it's not, um, we can celebrate it as Jesus' birthday. It's not pagan. Even Santa Claus, you know, yeah, there may be some kind of pagan group somewhere, but the, you know, there was, there was a man in history who gave gifts and okay, maybe he was a Catholic. I don't know. Um, but I think at that time, the cat, you know, it was like persecution and stuff. And so a lot of people back then who were Catholic may have actually understood the gospel and been saved. It's just that they had to be a lot of the ordinary everyday people. Um, you know, a lot of them went to the Catholic church and stuff because they had to. Um, and because you have, you actually have it mentioned in the Bible, the church of Thyatira, um, could be considered a Catholic church uh, because it says that they allow Jezebel to teach and to seduce God's people to eat things sacrificed in the idols. That is the mass. But it said that those who did not hold that doctrine, he would put no other burden on them. Um, so that so a lot of the everyday people back then, you know, or at least some of them may have actually understood salvation and been saved, and they would just. Catholic because they had to be, um, and they weren't, you know, they didn't understand a lot of things properly, so they didn't really know, because when you're, you're in a culture like that, and you're raised like that, it, it can be difficult to, and they didn't have a Bible back then, you know, it can be difficult to find the truth, um, and so, uh, but God said, well, even with Santa Claus, there's nothing evil but self, you just see her as, you know, some guy in history went and gave kids gifts. And, of course, I wouldn't lie to my kids and tell them that Santa Claus is real and that if they're good, they'll get gifts. And we never did that. And I would I don't think that Christian parents should lie to their kids. Um, because if you lie to them about Santa Claus, they're going to think that Jesus is a lie. So I don't see anything wrong with, like, with Santa Claus, um, just um, you know, it's a make believe thing, and you know, there was a guy in history who did give children gifts, and you know, God gave us the gift of Jesus. The wise men gave gifts, and it's more of a make believe cute thing, like Mickey Mouse. Although, oh my goodness, a lot of Christians need more against Mickey Mouse. Um, yes, I know Disney went for the homosexuals and stuff. Um, but the whole, but we are in the world, not of the world. If you boycott everything, you would have to, you'd have to live on a farm, grow all your own food, make all your own clothes. I mean, you wouldn't be able to be in society at all. Um, Jesus said we are in the world, not of the world. So, you know, and there's nothing evil itself. So, yes, my mother has got the living room full of Santa Clauses. We've got a Santa Claus with <laughs> sleigh with reindeer blow up thing in the front yard. Um, <laughs> You know, we got Santa Claus stuff all over the house, but we don't worship him, and and you know we don't. It's 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 cute. It's make believe, and you know, God said that that that's fine. It's we are not worshiping it. We you don't even you can have a Santa Claus without even going into the pagan stuff. It's like okay, if you can do the if most people do this stuff and they don't even know about the paganism, if it's possible to do this and have no knowledge of the paganism then you can keep the paganism out and do it, okay? Um, you can celebrate. You can have it. God's not a meanie up there with a baseball bat ready to whack you over the head for having fun, okay? Now, you know, when it comes to actual sin, like getting drunk, you know, there's some fun we can't do. Or some things that people call fun that we can't do. Um, I don't know. I've never been drunk, so I don't know if it's fun or not. But, I mean, Proverbs says at the end of it is bad because you get sick and you can't think and you lose your mind. And I'm like, and you have a hangover. And it's like, uh, I don't want that. Um, you know, I've never drank or anything. So, you know, what the world would call fun, some of that we are absolutely not allowed to do. Like, uh, get drunk. Uh, commit adultery. Um, those things, you know, the the world says, oh, this is, stuff is fun. But the Bible actually says sin, sin. Sin, and if the Bible actually says this is a sin, then okay, that's where we draw the line. And and like you know the you know some of the, I looked up some of the words in the Bible where the New Testament says wine, um, it, like it, in the marriage in Cana, it says that Jesus turned the water into wine. When I looked that up, it actually meant intoxicating drink. 
I was shocked because I had been taught that they didn't mean that. Um, but when I actually looked up the word, it, that's what it meant. And I'm like, okay. But on Passover, when the Lord's Supper was instituted, that was it never says wine. It says fruit of the vine. That was grape juice because they couldn't have leaven on the Passover. And alcohol is leavened. Some people argue, well, that's leavened bread. It's, it's only the... It's, it's not talking about drinks. It's talking about leavened bread. Well, I don't see that in the Bible. It says take out all leaven from your houses so they wouldn't be able to have any alcoholic beverages. And there is nothing in the Bible that says that the Lord, uh, the Lord's Supper, that the cup was alcohol. It says fruit of the vine. It makes a distinguishing there. So, you know, but Jesus did make actual intoxicating wine at the marriage. So... Yes, you can drink wine, but you just can't get drunk. So that's where the line is on that. And so, yes, those um, things we can do as Christians, that's not sin. But then if you go too far, it becomes sin. Okay. So, you know, and I, I kind of think that if you lie to your kids and tell them that Santa Claus is real, um, that is probably a sin. That's why I would not do that. Um, if I had children, I would. We would do Santa Claus and stuff, but I say, well, he's just make believe like Mickey Mouse, you know. Um, he, he's it's cute. He's make believe like Mickey Mouse, and and you know there was I tell him, yeah, there's there was a man like a thousand, couple thousand years ago or whatever that um, gave gifts to children, and you know Jesus, God gave us a gift at Christmas with Jesus, and the wise men gave Jesus gifts when they came and seen him about a year and a half later. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing wrong with gifts, and Santa Claus is just a make-believe thing. Um, so, you know, we can do these things without them being bad. And, you know, it is, and it's very important that we do keep Christ in Christmas, and we, you know, make sure that Jesus is the reason for the season, and actually make Jesus the center of the season, not just put him on the back shelf, you know. Um... But, so this is where I stand on it. You know, it's not a sin. I mean, it can't. Anything can be a sin. Anything can become idolatry. Anything can be a sin. Um, but you can celebrate. Just celebrating Christmas is not a sin. You know, the way that Christians celebrate it. You know, in the purity of it, it, it's not a sin. Now, if you, you know, it could become like covetousness and and idolatry and stuff if you're not careful, um, and. Uh, you know, when the Bible speaks of covetousness, that's not just wanting something. When you look that up, because I've done that study before, when you look that up, that is speaking of wanting something bad enough to where you would actually steal or kill for it. Okay, it's not just wanting something. Um, so people need to understand what covetousness actually is. Um, and can Christmas become that? Well, yes, because, you you know, when we go Christmas shopping, we have to put blankets in the car. And cover the gifts up because a couple of years ago, down here at our Walmart, someone was breaking windows out of cars and stealing Christmas presents and stealing stuff for Christmas presents. I mean, yes, that's that's what's wrong. It, you know, so if you divulge into that, um, well, for one thing, the Bible says you're not even saved because a saved person can't steal like that. Um, so, you know, it. but yes, um, you could. And then, you know, if you get disappointed that you didn't get something for Christmas to the point of where it actually hinders your relationship with God or hinders your relationship with the person that gave you the gift if you actually devolve into an ungrateful, bitter spirit, okay, that's sin too. Um, so, yes, but you could be a sinner like that over a birthday present too, not just a Christmas present. I mean, you know, so anything can become a sin, but Christmas can be celebrated, and you can enjoy Christmas and have candy and food and presents, and it can be holy and good, and, and they was like, well, it's not, and, and you know, one of the points was, was it wasn't a biblical holiday. <laughs> it wasn't one of the appointed times. And I'm going, but then though, they, but then they celebrate Hanukkah, which they said, well, that's a man's tradition too. And I'm going, okay, so you're saying that um, God's ancient people, the Jews, could create their own holidays that wasn't appointed times. But the church shouldn't create their own holidays and call them holy and call them good and Christian um, because it's not an appointed time. I mean, they were just going back and forth and it was really confusing and God was like, 
And and one thing God showed me, I mean, I saw a lot of like manipulation because my dad was a master manipulator, a narcissist, and a control freak. And I started seeing those same tactics, and I'm sitting there going, yeah, these people are not really sincere. Um, you know, the people I was listening to, and so I didn't like to, you know, I didn't, I didn't even watch the whole video. I was like, I'm not, these people, they're not logical, they're not, you know, and they seem to be hypocritical, so, but I was, I've seen a few videos like that, and I was like, well, I'm going to do a video on why I do celebrate Christmas, and maybe it'll help people to understand, you know, if I tell my personal story about it, it'll help people to understand more about the issues and where I'm coming from and what the Bible actually says. Um, and so I hope that helps people. If you have questions or anything, you can leave comments. And um, now I do have my comments where I have to approve all comments before I publish them um, so that I don't have my dad's family coming in commenting and causing trouble for me for no reason um so that's why i do that um and so you know i try to check the comments at least a couple of times a week with the holidays and everything it's really busy right now but yeah i'll try to keep an eye on the comments and if you have any questions or anything you know i'll check that out and uh get and answer you um but you know my reasons for celebrating christmas just to sum it up is it's not a sin not celebrating it was causing strife between us and uh, other Christians. Um, and then, you know, it is my mom's birthday and my dad was so hateful towards my mother the whole time they were married. And he used Christmas as a weapon against her um, that I was just like, okay, we're not, we're not, we're not doing this no more. We're going to have peace, you know. I celebrate Christmas in order to obey God to where it says follow after peace. Okay, it's not a sin and it's more peaceful to celebrate it than not to celebrate it. So that's why I celebrate it. And I know Jesus wasn't born on uh, Christmas, but we can celebrate it then. You know, there's no rule that says you have to celebrate a person's birthday on their birthday. We have another day in the year to celebrate my mom's birthday in July because she was born on Christmas. I mean, on Christmas, we get her a gift and we have cake and ice cream but then the rest of the day is just christmas and it's not about her birthday so about the only good thing my dad ever did was it was his idea to create a day for her in the middle of the year in the summertime because summertime you usually have more money and then the day is all about her and everything so he did do that um that's about the only good thing he ever did but i don't really know if that was a really good thing that could that looked like it may have been more of a manipulation to try to attack her over Christmas than it was for a good thing. Um, but, at, and we talked about it after he left, I asked mom if she wanted to continue to have that day every year, and she said she did. Um, so she does like that. I mean, who wouldn't want an extra? I'd like to have an extra birthday in the year, but I was born on June 26th, so that's not Christmas. I don't get an extra day. Um, but she wanted to keep that extra day, so she gets, the whole day is all about her. On July 15th and a lot of times that we don't even celebrate on July 15th because of work schedules and stuff and so we try to celebrate it sometime around there when when our work schedules work out um, so you know you don't have to celebrate a person's birthday on their birthday so celebrating Jesus's birthday on Christmas the Bible says you hold a day to the Lord or you don't God accepts you and approves of you and he's fine with it um, you know that's so you know that's why I do it is to basically keep peace for peace you know and i'm not compromising on the bible because the bible allows for it and so that's where i stand and thank you so much for watching i know this has gone really long um but i hope it helps people to understand you know what the biblical standards are and what and it helps it will help you to decide what you should do and you know it's everybody's personal beliefs and we should we and make sure if you, you know, if you, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, don't judge other people. Respect their beliefs, respect their standards, um, and don't, you know, don't try to make them fall. You know, respect them. Um, and, and in everything we do, you know, we are to follow things that make for peace and make sure that we are, you know, serving God and doing right and 
we're not bringing reproach upon Christ in any way. Um, so, you know, you wouldn't want a Christmas party where you get drunk. Because getting drunk does not glorify God. It, it brings reproach upon Christ. And so you wouldn't have, want to get drunk at any time. Um, you know, so, but you, we can celebrate Christmas and stuff and do these things properly. And they can be Christian. Um, because Christians can have uh, traditions and, and those, there is a Christian culture and um, there's a Western, you know, she was saying, the, the lady was saying that it couldn't, it's, it's not a Christian holiday because not all Christians around the world celebrate it. She was like, it was a cultural holiday. I'm like, well, what culture? Because it didn't start in America. I don't know where it started. I don't know if it started in England. Well, I guess it may have started in Rome. So it would be, but it's, you know, it's in England and France and throughout all Europe and America. So it could be said that it's a Western Christian cultural holiday, which means that it is still Christian. Um, so it, it, that, that can be said. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I've got to say about it. And so we'll go ahead and pray and close. And, uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all your blessings. Thank you for, uh, helping us to study your word and rightly divide it and understand the truth and help us we will serve you and obey you in all things and be glory, bring glory to you in all things. And you will bless us. And, um, uh, thank you for, uh, your word and all your blessings in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and close and I'll do the, uh, blessing over you. Um, and Yavarakaka Adonai, Vayish, Maraka, Yael, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Viku, Neka, Yisa, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Vesem, Laka, Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Okay, and, um, thank you so much, uh, for coming this week and, um, Please be sure to come back next week. Next week, Hanukkah, actually, we still celebrate Hanukkah, too. Um, and we do observe the appointed times uh, now. And, well, we found out we are actually Jewish. Um, so we do keep those. And Hanukkah actually starts this week, uh, Friday night. And um, so next week, I will probably do a message on Hanukkah. And then next week, I'll have a Christmas message. Um and, uh, so it's a, and, um, so, it, you know, it's the holiday season and that's what we're focusing on for the next few weeks. And, um, if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. Thank you so much and have a very blessed week. Bye. God bless you.